Hi, welcome to today's CLE. Uh, today we'll be discussing expungement. We have been working on expungement for the last several years in both Kansas and Missouri, and we're excited to share with you our lessons and share with you what we have learned. So uh, my name is Ayub Ajmi. I'm the director of uh, legal innovation and technology here at UMKT School of Law. I have been involved in expungement uh, for the last four years or so, uh, and I have uh, uh, participated in building one of the, some of the tools that that we will be showing uh, today. And with me, Scott. Hi, my name is Scott Stockwell. I'm an attorney from Lawrence, and uh, I am also the co-team lead on the Clear My Record Missouri project, along with Ellen Suny, Dean Emeritus at the University of Missouri, Kansas City School of Law. Uh, and I'm also working uh, with Paul on a Kansas expungement project, which we've collaborated with Kansas Legal Services and with uh, Wyandotte County uh, district attorney's office and we do expungement clinics across the state of Kansas. We've done 18 so far serving over 750 people. And I'm Paul Barham. Uh, I've been working with the expungement for the past four or five years. Started out with a code for Kansas City, a civic hacking group where I met Scott and we've decided to start working on this expungement project. I'm a software engineer and developer by trade. Uh, and this has also been done in conjunction with the uh, KC Digital Drive. Before we start, I want to talk a little bit about why expungement is important. So Missouri has an incarceration rate of 735 per 100,000, which is higher than the national average. Each year, over 100,000 Missourians are either behind bars or under supervision and more than 95% of people who enter Missouri Department of Corrections facilities are eventually released, with about 19,000 re-entering the community every year. These individuals face collateral consequences that can last for a lifetime, affecting their ability to secure jobs, housing, education, government benefits, and other basic needs. In many areas of the law, including expungement, most individuals cannot afford an attorney to help them navigate the court processes. Even if we could provide an attorney to every individual, it will take hundreds of years to expunge all eligible individuals. This is why we believe technology can help. Creating technology to bring expungement to more individuals is one of the pillars of the UMKC expungement project. Our goal is to build technology that supports individuals throughout the expungement process uh, on their own. So we created the do-it-yourself tool that anyone can use to learn about the process, determine their eligibility, and generate court-ready expungement petitions. In addition to this tool, we developed a system to support clinics and pro bono attorneys featuring resources that allow someone unfamiliar with the expungement to quickly learn the process. So um, as you can see from the slide here, we are not talking about, there are several expungement uh, that are available in both states. We target specific ones that we mentioned, six, uh, 610, 140 in Missouri and 2166.14 in Kansas. So in this uh, session, we will uh, talk about general introduction to the expungement in both Missouri and Kansas. Uh, Scott will take us through some comparison and, and know the differences and the challenges and the opportunities in both states. And after that, we will go through to explain some of the tools that we build and are available in Missouri that we, ho we hope you will uh, be using very soon. Uh, and after that, we will do a demonstration about the tool in Kansas, and we will conclude by discussing opportunities that are that will be available to you. So, Scott, you want to go and, and do introduction for Kansas and Missouri? Very good. Yes. I'm going to begin with an explanation of the similarities and the differences in the expungement statutes for the state of Missouri and Kansas. When somebody is seeking an expungement, there are basically three criteria that have to be met in order for that person to seek, obtain an expungement. First one is whether or not the crime that they've been charged or convicted of is an expungible offense. The second one is whether or not the individual meets the criteria of a person who is eligible for expungement. And then the third typically is that there are certain time criteria that pertain to uh, when the completion of sentence occurs until uh, the person applies for expungement. 
starting first with the basic issue of jurisdiction. Uh, in both states, the statute that relates to expungement basically only pertains to expungements for crimes that, for which they were convicted in the state of Missouri, respectively, or Kansas, respectively. It also does not cover federal convictions as well because there is no federal expungement statute. In terms of offenses that you can't seek expungement for, in the state of Kansas, there's a list of 19 offenses that specifically are not expungable, and they typically deal with uh, murder or with some sexual crimes or uh, crimes involving children. With respect to the state of Missouri, there are uh, scores of statutes that are not eligible, somewhere north of 100, I believe, and they also are in some very general categories, so it's not just simply a list of statutes, although there is a list of statutes, but there's also criteria such as whether or not it was a uh, class A felony, whether or not it was a dangerous felony. Um, there are several other criteria like that that you need to go down that list in the statute and make sure that none of those pertain to the case. Because some of the categories are general, and one of them, for example, is that it, if it's an ordinance that um, is similar to any of the ordinances or, or any of the statutes that are listed in the uh, expungement statute, it's very difficult for you to know in all instances whether or not that person is actually eligible for expungement. For example, in Missouri, um, there is a felony assault exception, but there's also a misdemeanor or felony domestic assault. And so whether or not the ordinance pertains to that uh, might be something that um, would be somewhat of a, a decision to be made by the judge that is hearing the expungement and not necessarily something that the average pro se litigant or even an average attorney is going to be able to provide the answer to. With respect to pending charges, both states uh, don't allow you to have a pending charge. I believe that in Kansas it's a no pending felony charges. I think in Missouri it might be a little bit broader and, and include any pending cases that you might have. Um, it might be that traffic infractions are not included in that, but I believe misdemeanors are included in Missouri. With respect to intervening cases, in Kansas, you can't have a felony conviction in the last two years, otherwise you have to wait for that two-year period to pass. In Missouri, the way that the statute works is that basically you start restart the clock. So if you have a conviction from that date, then you go forward as to whether or not you meet the criteria of one year or five years. With respect to sex offenses, um, if you are on the registry in either state, then that would not be somebody who can apply for expungements. With respect to drug offenses, um, again, Missouri has a constitutional amendment in which some uh, marijuana offenses uh, can be expunged and they can be expunged automatically. Not all of those expungements are happening automatically, and so there, there is a process that someone can go through to seek application to have records expunged. Uh, in Kansas, um, if you are on the drug registry, then it is possible for you, after five years of successful participation, uh, so that requires you to register and consistently, it is possible for you to apply for offenses that are relating to drug, um, if that's the reason why you're on the registry, to have that uh, offense be, be removed from the registry, and then, uh, and then you can apply for the underlying offense or other offenses that you're, you, you were otherwise blocked on, you can apply for expungement for those. Uh, there is a form that the Kansas Judicial Council has prepared that for allows for expungement of, and getting off the registry and also expunging the underlying offense at the same time. With respect to guns, uh, many people that uh, go to an expungement clinic uh, identify that the reason that they're doing so is because they want to be able to have a gun or buy a gun. 
uh, Kansas and Missouri expungements are not what the federal government considers to be a complete expungement. So it's not a destruction of the records. There are reasons why those records can be referred to in the, in the future based upon uh, sentencing or based upon application for certain employment uh, and those, some other court requirements. And so those don't qualify, and so it doesn't get that person off of the federal uh, list of felony convictions. And so when that person, if that person were to go uh, hunting on a federal land and a game warden were to stop them. That person would be considered on the federal level to be a felony in possession and that's I believe a 20-year conviction. So uh, it is something that clients need to understand and, and pro, se, pro se applicants need to understand as well. Uh, another example I give, well besides not being able to um, purchase a gun because of the, of the uh, uh, search that is done when that person applies. Also, you know, if there were some reason why FBI were involved in investigation of some kind of a crime and they identified, they had a search warrant they executed in a particular property and that person was in possession, again, that would be a felon in possession even though the underlying felony conviction in the state no longer existed. Time limits. So, uh, for um, Kansas, uh, generally speaking, the time limits are three years for misdemeanor and low-level felonies. There's one very minor exception for prostitution uh, of one year and under certain circumstances. Five years for major felonies. And uh, for DUI offenses, there are different criteria over time. I believe there's one that's as little as five, but for the most part it will be seven to ten years for a DUI. In Missouri, it would be one year for misdemeanor and three years for felonies. I may have referred to five earlier, but I believe it's uh, three years for felonies. Uh, the need for expungement is profound in both states, and um, the work that we've done in, in Kansas, for example. Uh, we've worked with Kansas Legal Services. We've developed an application that people, are gonna, that, that people are able to use, and that application is very easy to use. And at clinics, we use it to handle um, 40, 50 applications in a day. However, the need is literally, essentially, almost uh, relate, related to the number of people that are convicted on an annual basis and add and multiply that by many years in which expungement has not taken place, there's a lot of work that needs to be done with respect to providing expungement in both states. The process, um, so relatively speaking, Kansas has the easier uh, process. Uh, it is a petition that you file in the criminal case and um, a copy goes to the DA's office if they run their search and they and they don't object typically the court will sign the order without a hearing being held and the expungement is complete that's also the case in Missouri that you file the case if the, if the prosecutor or other agencies don't object uh, it's relatively straightforward in terms of getting an expungement the problem however is that it is a civil uh, case, and so you're filing a new petition, you're, you have a new case number, you've got to serve every agency that might potentially have the records for that individual. So for a pro se litigant, that's a real challenge of figuring out who do I serve, but even for the average attorney, it's a little bit of a challenge to figure out all the agency you have to serve, make sure the service is done in accordance with civil procedure. Case history. Um, in Kansas, uh, in the last uh, several years, the state system has consolidated the records for uh, 104 of the 105 counties uh, into a system that's called Odyssey. It has a public search function, so you can go to search.kscourts.org, and it's easy to run a search on an individual and find all the cases that are out there for that person. Uh, for those people that 
have been associated with the, uh, with the Department of Corrections. There's a system called CASPER, K-A-S-P-E-R, that uh, has information about those people, whether they were incarcerated or whether they were just simply were in, in the, uh, in the, in the uh, Department of Corrections period, system for even a short period of time. On Missouri side, it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, the CaseNet system is a wonderful system. It's statewide. It provides information regarding many of the offenses, but it doesn't necessarily always catch everything. And so we found that it's almost uh, a necessity to run a Missouri Highway Patrol criminal history search, and, and it's also probably best that that search is a finger uh, print record search in order to make sure that you get all of the information there. One of the challenges in Missouri is because you you can only expunge at the present time anyway one felony and two misdemeanors is that people who have a longer criminal history and and that not unusual that that is somebody who's sort of stuck in a uh, an economic crime situation where they're they don't have their driver's license and then they get a suspended drive while suspended and then they then they get a uh, uh, no no registration for the vehicle and that just keeps perpetuating itself so for those people that have multiple crimes you really need to get that complete medical uh, complete criminal history so that you can identify what is that one felony and the two misdemeanors that that person should apply for I mentioned service, a uh, little bit of a challenge. Uh, again, that you have to you have to name the Highway Patrol. Uh, it might be the Department of Revenue, um, the Sheriff's Department that, that handled the incarceration, the the uh, Department of Corrections. Uh, the cost in Kansas is one hundred ninety five dollars for each case in which you have an expungement uh, application. In Missouri, it is two hundred and twenty five dollars, but that can be one application for one county can include all three of the cases that you're seeking to expunge. Also, you can file a, a, a financial affidavit in both states, and if they're unable to pay and the court makes a determination they're unable to pay, the fee can be waived. Uh, in uh, With respect to hearings, as I said, uh, it's not necessarily consistent by district or circuit court so some judges really insist that people show up so that they sort of go through the process and other courts uh, if there's no objection is simply granted sort of administratively i'm going to talk about one of the first problems we hit when we started doing expungements and that was getting good clean data one of the first things we wanted to know when a person approached us is whether what they, the statute that they were charged was eligible or not. And we did not have a source for that. Uh, we wanted to just pick up the phone and ask someone that. So we built the tool ourselves. We ended up using data from the Missouri State Highway Patrol charge code manual page and we went through and grabbed all of the charge codes and related them to the statutes to create this database. The DOC Sunshine file we found would allow us to see everyone that's been underneath their supervision since 1956. Uh, that is 1.2 million records. Uh, the, reason, the real value of this database is we can quickly see without cost if a person has been underneath their supervision. And depending upon the uh, offense, we can determine whether we're going to be able to expunge them or not, saving us the step of having to request a state highway patrol, which costs money and takes time to happen. Uh, but the sunshine file by itself is is not that useful in this case. Uh, so we've combined it with our eligibility database to show what's eligible or what's not eligible. This shows the results of a DOC search and in pink is the uh, data we brought in from the eligibility database. 
So we're mapping the Missouri charge code into the statute number and then showing you whether it's eligible or not. The other value we wanted to add was to make the results easily understandable. You can see in this slide three statutes. The first one is eligible. The second one is possibly eligible, and it shows that in yellow and also explains what needs to be checked. In this case, to see if, it's, if the conviction was a felony A. And then the last one explains, shows a statute that is not eligible and it explains why per 610.140. Another problem we had was who to serve in a particular city or county. Uh, and we found ourselves oftentimes doing that research multiple times. So we created a directory of agencies that we've built and uh, allows us to add missing agencies or update agencies. Um, again, this is a combination of several data sources that we combined into one. So when you do a search, in this case we search for Kansas City, Missouri, you can see all the state agency, the county agencies that you may or may not want to service and municipalities. Uh, what you don't see on the screen is uh, several colleges and airports in the area. You can also uh, just click on the little uh, notepad and have one copy to your clipboard or you can select multiples, in this case all of them are selected, and export them to a file where you can do a mail merge for labels or form letters. I'm going to cover the petition generator. We had a prototype that we used five years ago and we are now in the process of updating it. It allows for collaboration between attorneys working on a on an individual's case, and it also is set up so each law firm or organization has their own data and is not visible by other organizations. Notable functionalities are it allows you to collect an individual's criminal history in one place. You will have to go out most people go out to CaseNet, also Missouri State Highway Patrol, uh, the municipal courts, and Regis just to collect data for one individual. And it allows you to do this and track what, where you've collected it from. It also helps you determine the eligibility by going out to the uh, expungement database. This, shows, this screen shows our initial redesign concept where we're highlighting more critical information so someone new coming in to work on a case or review a case can quickly see that this person has no previous felonies or misdemeanors and they do have pending cases and blocking cases. It's also structured so it's organized by case and then charges. We're designing this around a clinic situation where the date where the history may already be assembled and that a volunteer attorney comes in and they can quickly see the state of the case. Here they would quickly see that uh, we need to check the parole release date. They would also quickly see that the individual does not have any previous felonies or misdemeanors, but they do have pending cases. Uh, pertinent information is organized at the top of the screen and then when you get down to the lower portion it has the cases listed and then also for each case uh, what charges are in that case and again you can quickly see that the first statute is uh, a misdemeanor A and it's eligible and that they were convicted. This can be used during the interview with the individual, updated and then once done, they can select from this screen what they want to have expunged or not expunged. And 
and at, and the next step would be to print the documents for the petition and supporting and supporting documents. The public expungement tool is an online a guided interview that allows Missourians to generate petitions they need to file for expungement. It is composed of several uh, components, and in, in this segment, I will walk you through the highlight of the, pit, the application, and then we will do a quick demonstration. So the petition, uh, the 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 expungement petition, is composed of different. Uh, component. One of them is eligibility. The eligibility is very important because one of the the, the highest need for self-help litigants is they don't necessarily understand the statute. They don't necessarily understand if they are eligible or not. So based on the experience and based on the work we have done in the expungement for the last several years, we ask specific questions that will allow us to know exactly if someone is eligible or not. If they are eligible, we let them proceed and move forward. If they are not eligible, then they don't have to waste their time and start answering all questions just so and in the end we tell them they are not eligible. So this is very important. It saves time for the users and it makes the user experience important. Uh, and then once they pass the eligibility, then they go to complete their petition. In that is play in that sta stage, then we ask the information that we need uh, to prepare the forms. And in the end, uh, they gener we generate we help them generate the form. We help them with the service sheet, and we give them information so they can file their petitions with the clerk. So this is the the first page on the tool. As you can see, we have this video. So uh, one of the the, the thing that we wanted to emphasize is first we want to make the language easy to understand. So all the questions, all the descriptions, and the options are in plain language. Uh, this is very important because all the forms that users are usually uh, 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 presented with from the court are in legalese. They are hard to understand and, and and very complicated to follow and most of the time they ended up uh, uh, filing the wrong form or missing some of the information. So we want to make sure that we avoid that. So we add as much information as we want early on in the process. We add information about the cost, about the service, about the eligibility and all of that. Um, and in, in doing so, we created uh, videos. We created an animated character that we called Spongy. Spongy is a kind judge in Missouri who helped Missouri and file for expungement. So we have videos where Spongy explains what is expungement, what is the process uh, of expungement in Missouri, and it also helps them with, with, with different aspects of the petition, and we embedded those videos in this guided interview. So the first video that you can see here is the overview of the expungement tool. Um, the do-it-yourself expungement tool is an expungement petition generator that will take your information and create a fileable petition. The purpose of this tool is to make it as easy as possible for anyone, especially those representing themselves in court, to draft your own Missouri expungement petition. This tool is limited to formatting and organizing your answers to specific questions. This tool does not research to find gaps in any information you have provided. This tool does not check the accuracy of the information you have provided. Before you begin this guided interview, locate information regarding your criminal record. The more information you can gather, the easier it will be for you to answer the questions. If you do not have any records on hand, research yourself on Missouri CaseNet. Send a records request to the court you were convicted in. Get a Missouri Highway Patrol MSHP fingerprint report. If you need assistance or have questions, please contact us by phone at 816-235. 1671 or email us at expungementclinic at umkc.edu. You can also visit our website at www.clearmyrecordmo.org for more information about expungement in Missouri. The next step when they go to the petition, we will see a different video. So, um, as I said earlier, the eligibility is very important. So, for example, if someone is uh, looking for a different type of expungement that we are helping with, we won't let them uh, move forward. So, we want to make sure that only Missouri can proceed with this petition. If they are in Kansas, we will provide them with information on how to do that in the Kansas side. Uh, if they have a pending case, for example, they are not going to be able to proceed. So, we show them an error. Um, and then we keep, if they have uh, uh, an open warrant, same thing. So we want to make sure that they pick only the right options that we let them continue. 
if they say that they have previously expunged the petition, we want to know what did they, what they have expunged and how many times because we know that there are limitations in that. This is another video where Spongy explained how to use CaseNet, how to find your information and how to find the information that are specifically needed for, for to file for a petition. It provides a good starting point for tracking the rest of your case information. Once you know what county your offense occurred in, you can file a formal records request with that county to retrieve the official records. Look at Missouri CaseNet online by visiting www.courts.mo.gov forward slash CNET. Choose to search by litigant name or by case number if you know it. Find the entry for your case by checking the case number, county, and date. If your case does not appear in the search results, it does not mean it is gone and won't show up on your background checks. If you believe you have a case that is not showing up, call the court clerk for more information. Once you locate your case, more information about your case could be under the corresponding tabs including case header, charges, judgments, or sentences tab. If you need assistance or have questions, please contact us. All right, so once you know your information, you can proceed. And in this uh, application, we allow them to add many cases, not just one uh, case. So they can add as many cases as they want. And within each case, they have a number of offenses. Then on the next step, that's where we start looking at the eligibility of their offenses. Offenses could be eligible and all they have to do is to type the number and then this uh, search box is connected to database that we mentioned earlier. So by adding the, the number of the case or by adding the three first digits of the case, we look up all the cases, the, the, all the, the offenses that are available and we, qu we quickly can tell which one is eligible, which one is not. For example, this one is not eligible, they will not be able to proceed, they won't be able to select it. But this one is eligible, they can select this one. And if they have more than one offense, we tell we can allow them to do that as well, to add as many offenses as they want. So now uh, we are looking for cases for the second, for offenses for the second case. We do the same process. For this one, we're only going to add one. All right. So now we know that those offenses for this first case, those are elig those offenses are eligible, but the individual may not be eligible. So we need to check that. So we ask for this offenses, what was the charge? Were you charged on felony A? I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say felony A, for example. And then for the rest, I'm going to say misdemeanor, misdemeanor here again, and then continue. And we move to the second case, and we do the same thing. Do felony, and then we continue. All right. So we built in this petition, uh, the algorithm that is needed to do the calculations for, for the user. So they don't have to do it on their own. We know that one of the offenses, they were charged as felony A. Felony A is not eligible for expungement, so they won't be able to proceed with that. However, for the other cases, it looks like they are, they are uh, expungible. Uh, the first one, it would count as a misdemeanor because we only have two misdemeanors. And the second one will count as a felony because we have one felony. If we go back, for example, and we change this one to uh, felony, then the calculation will change. As you can see, in this case, we have one felony, one misdemeanor. The case by itself will count as a felony. And then we do the same here. This one also is a felony. But you notice something. Now they can only pick one of them. The reason is because in Missouri, you are only allowed to expunge one felony in lifetime. Let's go back again and change this to a misdemeanor. Now we have a checkbox because it allows us to pick up to two misdemeanors and we have two, so we can proceed with that. So as you can see, we built in all th this uh, um, uh, calculations, the statute, the law within the, the, the guy, the interview, so users don't have to do that. 
Now we're going to check again uh, uh, some information. We know that this offense is uh, el eligible, but we want to ask certain questions that will determine whether the user itself, uh, um, himself or herself, can expunge the, the offense. So if they have already filed, no. So we check the date because this is uh, a, f an, uh, a misdemeanor. It has to be less than one year. If, for example, we say uh, May 1st, 2024, then it's less than a year. It won't count. So it has to be less than a year in order to proceed. And then you have to pay all your fines. If you have not paid your, your fines, you won't be able to proceed. So as you can see, every offense, we do the check and we make sure that they are eligible. So now based on the calculations, based on the answers that we provided, in the end, this person can only expunge one uh, offenses and one case. And the rest, they could not expunge them because they either did not meet the deadline, they did not meet, they didn't pay their fines, or um, they have tried within the last year to expunge the same offense and they failed. So now that we have that we know that this person is eligible for expungement, we know that the offenses we picked are eligible for expungement. Now we can move on to collecting the personal information. And then once you uh, uh, type in all the information here, you will be able to download the petition in the end. So this is the last screen after we add the information about the, of, uh, the, the offense and we add the personal information. Because we picked the specific county, county here, we know that those are the agents, agencies that the user will need to, uh, to service. Uh, we check the one that are required and then the user can check or uncheck the rest of them. They can also add their own uh, service agency if they want to. But typically, we, we hope that we covered all of them so they don't have to add anything else. And then you hit continue. This is the last screen where they will be able to download. And now the petition is available to download as a packet that will include the expungement petition, the service sheet, and additional helpful information. Okay, uh, this is the Kansas Expungement app. Uh, you go to the website expungement.works and uh, you click on the app and that will take you to our KC Digital Drive website where you click on the prototype. And then it will uh, bring up the opportunity for you to identify that you're the attorney, that you're looking to fill out the expungement application for a person you're not representing, put in your email address, identify whether you are doing a Kansas conviction or another state, that's a qualifier. If, if it's uh, federal or state, it, another state, it's not uh, expungible. If it's a conviction, uh, that it confirm it's not one of these crimes, that you have uh, no felony charges pending, that you haven't been convicted of felony in the last two years, and that you're not required to register under the, the uh, registry. Then uh, it begins with the information for the applicant. So you put in their full name, and then if they have a different name showing on the heading for their case, put that name in. And then if there are any other aliases, put that information in so that it makes sure that their, uh, expun their uh, expungement uh, information that goes to KBI is complete. Then uh, put in their current address information, their email, uh, and their phone number. And that information is on the document because they're a pro se litigant. The draft documents come to you as an attorney if you're assisting, and then you will send them the documents. This next information is information that, that Kansas Legal Services is required to gather for determining who is eligible for what parts of their services. So it's basically statistical information that is not particularly relevant to the, to the application itself.
Then we put in the case number that we're actually handling, which you can find at search.kscourts.org. Uh, unless it's a very old case, uh, getting back into the, perhaps the 80s or early 90s. It depends probably on county by county. And then the exact date of the arrest is helpful because that helps the, the police department or the sheriff's department find the records. So putting in that information. Um, then identifying the county in which the arrest took place, uh, that's important, again, for determining where the records are that need to be expunged. And then it identifies the number of cases, the number of charges within the case and the severity of it. And then there's a sort of a common description like breaking and entering in this example. And then uh, the statute number goes below that. You'll find in the Odyssey at, at search.kscourse.org that the case um, or statute numbers are shown uh, in a little bit of a different format, but we just copy and paste those because it's uh, efficient and that's the way the court shows it in their own records. Then uh, adding in the second charge that I identified, <clears throat> and you'll notice that uh, this information regarding what the original charges were may be the same as what actually they're convicted of, so you can just go back and copy and paste once you get that point. Uh, here's a, a, a question that sort of confirms, again, uh, the length of time you have to wait or, or some other ineligibility issue. And then uh, I've simply identified a, a different charge for the, the amended charge for the conviction and again, uh, the date of conviction is the date of that the plea is taken, not the date of sentencing. Um, and then if it is a, a drug court or a veterans court or behavioral court, they're eligible to apply as soon as they successfully complete the program. So that's why that question is there, but you're not typically going to have somebody in that situation. And then the date of discharge is the date from which the number of years that they have to wait is calculated. Then if you want to provide financial information, you may. Uh, that would take you to a set of questions that goes to, onto the financial affidavit. Otherwise, if they can pay the $195, then you just say no and you click submit and you get this message and then you will receive an email from uh, the application. It will have the draft documents all prepared for you to review. So in about a minute and a half, uh, after you've submitted uh, the information to the application, you'll receive an email like this, identifies the documents that are generated. You can see it here. Uh, you open those up and you'll have an opportunity to edit or, or review them uh, in a, um, a PDF uh, viewer. And then if there are any changes that are needed, you can return uh, you can return to the email and there's a link there where you can click to edit submission. If this client has other documents or other cases that they need to complete the application for, there's a uh, link for you to click for a new submission. Um, this is just kind of scrolling through showing you what the document looks like. Uh, it's based upon the Kansas Judicial Council uh, documents and so it's a very standardized look. Um, and we really have not encountered uh, any problems in terms of district courts being willing to accept them. We do have uh, orders for expungement, for example. I know that Johnson County has their own order, and so they prefer to use that, and I think that might be the case with respect to one or two other counties. This shows you what the poverty affidavit looks like. Uh, this one wasn't filled out because we didn't take the time but uh, it's basically information on a monthly basis of income, assets, and liabilities. And, and as you can see, in addition to the affidavit uh, for the filing fee, waiver of the filing fee, uh, let's see, finally there, there's where the link is for uh, doing a new case for that individual, and there's the other link for editing the submission. Do the new case instead of the edit the submission first because just the way the software works, uh, it functions better that way. Uh, when you go to a uh, new submission, um, I'm just going to show you here briefly. Um, 
so you will make the decision again of if I'm assisting as an attorney but not representing the individual and then as you can see some of the other information is automatically filled out so uh, yeah there you go so uh, um, it asks you for the just the changes that you need there are one or two items that might be omitted that you want to just be careful and make sure that everything is completed so hope that's helpful in terms of showing how easy the application is to use. So I hope you enjoyed this session. I hope that you learned something new and uh, you are excited about these tools. Um, we are in the process of looking for partners in both Missouri and Kansas to help us with the development, to finish the development, to help us with the testing and other tasks. Uh, so Scott, if someone is interested in, in Kansas, how they can help or how they can participate? Right. Uh, both of these projects are in the development stage and these are prototypes in various stages of development. On the Kansas side, we have opportunities for volunteers to uh, participate in expungement clinics that are held by Kansas Legal Services. We have some coming up in Johnson County, also in uh, Kansas City, Kansas, but also across the state. Uh, in addition to that, we'd love to have the opportunity to collaborate with private attorneys with respect to their own practice and using the software in that regard. So uh, if you'd like to participate, love to have you uh, become involved. Uh, our website is expungement.works, and so you can go there, test out the application, but also reach out to us as well. And then in Missouri? We're still in the development phase, and we are looking for people to help us test the application while we're in development. Uh, we're also interested in people that think that they would actually want to use this tool once it is developed. So please reach out to me at paulb at savagesoft.com. Okay, I'm going to put the information. And then, uh, again, um, those are tools that we believe will help a lot of people in both states. It also will help attorneys who are interested in expungement that they not necessarily have the experience in working in expungement. That's really the goal of those tools is to make expungement available to more people. And we believe that technology can help with that. So thank you again for joining us. We hope to talk to you again soon. Contact information is in the screen. Feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. Before we go, I want to remind you about some resources available at UMKC School of Law. If you are interested in participating in our projects through classes or collaboration, consider joining the Legal Technology Lab. The LTL was founded in 2017 by a group of law schools, attorneys, and technologists. The LTL has a list of over 200 individuals passionate about the intersection of law and technology. We encourage collaboration, prototyping, knowledge sharing in the legal technology field. The LTL now functions under the new uh, Center for Law, Entrepreneurship, and Innovation. To learn more about the center and the LTL, visit our website or join our newsletter. Thank you.